Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, October 3rd, 2016. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, here's Hurricane Matthew, unfortunately still a catastrophically strong hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour and perhaps higher, and moving north now at about 8 miles per hour toward the western tip of Haiti. It's moving a bit quicker than it was the last couple of days down here. So this is coming right in tonight uh, to western Haiti, eastern Cuba, about to get the core of Hurricane Matthew. Jamaica fortunately avoiding uh, most of the inner core of the hurricane. However, heavy rains may still occur over mountainous areas here, and so th uh, flooding, flash flooding, mudslides are a potential concern for the mountainous regions of Jamaica. In addition, the Dominican Republic, well removed from the core, but it's on the wet eastern side of the hurricane, so this spiral band in here is just going to keep dumping rain in the mountains, and so life-threatening flooding is by far the biggest problem with a hurricane in the Greater Antilles. The hurricane force wind field is only about this size. It's not much larger than that. It's going to affect western Haiti straight on in eastern Cuba, unfortunately, tonight and tomorrow. But the rest of these areas, even without the winds affecting uh, the rain, is by far the most life-threatening hazard with a storm like this. So please be prepared for the kind of flooding that is already uh, perhaps starting to occur in portions of Hispaniola. You can see that the health of the storm today has changed a little bit from the last couple of days. We first see a much healthier CDO, colder convection, stronger thunderstorms. Uh, the system has gotten a little bit better defined today in the inner core, perhaps due to dry air on the west side mixing out. So now that you can see the core is more solid, there are less breaks in it. However, you notice that the eye has been going in and out of being clear and being cloud filled just at the end of the loop here as I'm talking you're seeing it getting a little more obscured and this is likely because an eye wall replacement cycle is underway we talked about this being possible and it is now occurring if we look at the microwave pass we can see the remnants of the inner eye wall right there this little band this is what was the inner eye that six mile eight mile wide eye that we've had for the last couple of days there's this bigger band now starting to wrap around about three quarters of the way there it's still open on the southwest side but that will likely eventually close off and we'll get an eye that looks like this size, now a larger eye. Unfortunately, uh, the hurricane normally would weaken during this period, but for now it's actually deepening a little bit. The pressure's all the way down to 934, 936 millibars on the last couple of recon passes, along with a very, very strong inner core. So strong, in fact, that we have winds up to 168 knots at only a few hundred to a thousand feet above the ocean surface. That's 193 miles per hour just above the surface. That's not at the surface, but it means that gusts of that strength could get down uh, as uh, the thunderstorms mix momentum down from higher heights down toward the ground. So this is a very, very powerful hurricane right now. And uh, this will likely complete its eyeball replacement sometime near where it's it's uh, when it's nearing Haiti it remains unclear uh, the mountains of Haiti will mess up the inner core some and then the mountains of Cuba as well uh, so we'll see how how organized it can stay for the sake of the Bahamas on the other side uh, but it is going to remain very strong regardless because uh, realistically this is not that much land for it to pass over uh, because it uh, has a lot of water in there too. So although there are mountains, uh, they don't last very long. So it's kind of a speed bump for the hurricane at this point. It will knock it down, but perhaps not as much as if the hurricane had gone straight over the brunt or the bulk of Hispaniola. Uh, this is uh, the water vapor imagery continuing to show very healthy outflow pattern in all quadrants of the storm, still most healthy on the east side. There is still some southwesterly shearing flow that you can see over the northwest Caribbean. However, the hurricane is not moving toward it. It's moving parallel to it at the moment. So shear doesn't really seem to be a big issue for the hurricane. Again, the core looks healthier than it has the last couple of days. There's this upper trough continuing to reside over the Gulf of Mexico. This will weaken and shift southwest over the next couple of days as this trough further north off your screen lifts out to the northeast over the northwest Atlantic. And thus this shear zone may weaken over time. So as the hurricane moves up into the Bahamas here over the next couple of days, shear is not really expected to be much of a hindrance to the system, unfortunately. And again, it's taking a track right now that kind of minimizes its impact with the mountains of Cuba and Hispaniola, so it may not weaken all that much. It, it will definitely weaken, uh, but it may re-strengthen pretty quickly on the other side in the Bahamas if the inner core remains pretty well intact but we can hope that it rips it up a little bit more than expected. These islands do have a way of interrupting hurricanes a lot uh, in an unpredictable way. So let's hope they do. Unfortunately, though, uh, 
Haiti and Cuba will see the brunt of the storm in its full strength right now, tonight and tomorrow. After that, things become uh, now a little clearer today. Uh, there has been a trend in the forecast beyond the Greater Antilles. It is still expected to come up into the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos in the central Bahamas are going to start getting this by late tomorrow night and into Wednesday, or into Wednesday. And this is the model forecast now on the GFS out to Wednesday afternoon, showing the hurricane getting into the central Bahamas. This is after it starts turning northwest because of this ridge over Bermuda. So this is imposing a southeasterly steering flow toward the United States. This is the ridge we've been talking about. How strong does this get determines how far west this thing tracks. We've got our players, the upper low off New England, the trough over the Great Plains. How do they interact with this ridge and how much is it able to build? Unfortunately, the trend today has been that this ridge gets stronger than originally forecast. And so on the GFS now, if we go out to Thursday morning, look at how far west this is. This is over Andros Island, not that far from southeast Florida, and look how close it gets by uh, Thursday evening. This is right off of West Palm Beach, and this is uh, well within the range of bringing perhaps even hurricane conditions to parts of eastern Florida. Remember, the storm does not have to come on shore to bring tropical storm to hurricane conditions to the coast, and this will likely be a somewhat larger storm after it crosses Haiti and Cuba. And again, it could re-strengthen in the Bahamas here, so this could be a very strong hurricane at this point, which means its wind field could expand over Florida and bring tropical storm winds well over much of the peninsula if the track is this close. You can see this big ridge here extending up into the Carolinas and Virginia, and so this steering flow continues to be north north westward and so the hurricane comes right up the coast of Florida right near Cape Canaveral to just east of Savannah by Saturday morning. At this point this big trough is coming out of the Great Plains so you can see this ridge gets pushed off to the east of the country and so now the steering flow is going to be more toward the northeast but at this point it's already so close to the coast that it basically just parallels the entirety of the southeast U.S. coastline and this is obviously a horrendous track uh, would affect a wide wide region of coastal cities. And this is a terrible forecast at the moment because it doesn't take much deviation to the right or left to determine whether uh, a certain state or a certain region could get a direct landfall. But again, I will say the hurricane does not need to be onshore to cause very, very bad problems on a track like this. Here's the European at the same, uh, starting at the same time, Wednesday morning, coming into the Bahamas, Thursday morning, uh, a little bit farther east of the GFS, which is over Andros Island at this time, uh, Friday morning, east of Cape Canaveral, again, slightly east of the GFS, but you can see how much closer it is compared to the run from a day ago. You can see it was uh, farther offshore than the current run at the same time. And then this continues up as well, and this is just east of uh, Savannah by Saturday morning, Again, here comes the trough, so this ridge is pushed offshore, and now the hurricane does turn northeast, and on the Euro, it also stays offshore, slightly farther than the GFS, but this is only 100 miles offshore. So this is more than close enough to cause uh, serious problems from the south tip of Florida all the way up to Cape Hatteras. This entire region could now be affected by the hurricane, uh, even if there's no landfall, simply by virtue of how close this track may get. And looking at the GFS upper level pattern, this is again back at Wednesday afternoon when the hurricane is coming into the Bahamas. Again, it will get ripped up a bit by the mountains of Cuba and Hispaniola. But unfortunately, this upper level pattern is very favorable. You can see that this trough weakens and the hurricane's outflow is able to expand uh, to the west, to the north, and to the east. And this trough is way back here. So this shearing jet is uh, nowhere to be found while this is in the Bahamas. And so barring some, uh, you know, barring this getting much weaker than expected after crossing the mountains, it could be very easy for this to re-strengthen uh, to its former fury while in the Bahamas. Not only is this a big problem obviously for the Bahamas as it moves northwest and not too quickly either, but for Florida and the Carolinas because the stronger this gets, again, the larger the wind field could be, and if the core comes ashore and we get a landfall, then obviously that's a huge problem. And uh, so this could be easily a major hurricane all the way up the coast. Uh, you can see that as we go forward, we continue to have great outflow until about day four and then you see this trough comes in and now you have this strong jet pushing eastward and so you can start getting some southwesterly shear over the storm there's usually dry air lingering to the west of the hurricane at the base of the trough that can get entrained into the circulation and we can start getting the hurricane looking like it's trying to transition to a more non-tropical look as it comes up northeastward but at this point it could be too little too late 
after the hurricane scrapes much of the southeast coastline and then moves off into the West Atlantic as it transitions to an extra tropical storm. So it's very easily possible that we could have a, a very strong hurricane getting within 100 miles of four states here in the southeast United States. This is obviously something that folks should start paying attention to a lot more than the last couple of days as tracks have shifted west uh, in general. And this now gets very close. You can see the model envelope and generally through here. And again, a lot of these are offshore, but I will say again, it only has to be within 100 or 200 miles to cause big problems in the coastline in the form of life-threatening surf, uh, waves, wind, rip currents, uh, rainfall, tropical storm force winds, hurricane force winds if it's within 100 miles. Uh, these things, uh, it doesn't have to be that close to cause an issue. So this is something that folks should stop thinking about preparing for and start actually preparing for as we go forward. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast track Again, hurricane warnings for Cuba, Haiti tonight. This is happening tonight, the core of the hurricane coming over the western tip of Haiti into Cuba by tomorrow and tomorrow night. And this will be a direct hit most likely for both of these countries. Unfortunately, again, a much wider area will receive very, very heavy rainfall. Life-threatening by far the biggest hazard with this storm is the inland flooding and mudslides in the Greater Antilles. For the Bahamas, it's a full suite of problems. The hurricane may parallel much of the island chain. Uh, the only part of the islands that may avoid the core of the hurricane are the Turks and Caicos, but they're still under a hurricane watch. Hurricane warnings for the central part of the Bahamas, hurricane watch up for the northwestern Bahamas, and we may need watches for southeast Florida pretty quick here. So this is something, we're talking about 2 p.m. Thursday here, when this could be on closest approach to South Florida, if not moving over South Florida, if the current westward trend continues in some of these forecasts. So this is something that folks should be preparing for now. We're within three days of the event for Florida. We're still out at day four and five. We're talking about perhaps the weekend for the Carolinas, uh, but this isn't that far away now. So this is something to pay very close attention to. Chances are at this point, given that we're within three to five days of it being in this area, that this is going to be just about as close to the southeast coast as the models currently say. Whether or not it shifts farther west and we get a clean landfall somewhere in here, that remains to be seen. But at this point, I would say it's pretty likely that this gets close enough to the coast to cause problems for somebody from Florida to Georgia and the Carolinas, and perhaps even farther up the eastern seaboard in the longer term. Still uncertain, but right now, it seems like it would be more likely to turn out away from New England at this point. But of course, things could change. They obviously have so far. So uh, keep an eye on this all up the eastern seaboard here. But obviously a big problem coming. Uh, so please pay attention, stay informed, uh, keep up to date with the latest information from the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service offices around the southeast United States. They will tell you uh, all the latest on the storm, as I only post once a day. Don't get it from me, get it from them. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.